dear boys and girls, I do hopes and prayers that y'all are all keeping well and healthy. And I do hopes and prayers that y'all are caring and sharing uh, what y'all have with those who do not have in some small way even during this time in our country. So, for today's story, we are going to look at, a li at the life of a person. A person who lived more than 100 years ago. He was born more than 100 years ago. He was a missionary. Do you know who missionaries are? Missionaries are anyone who takes the word of God to the world. Missionaries can be male and female, boys and girls. They are people who have it in their hearts to take God's love, the message that Jesus gave to those who do not know it. So some people travel to very distant places. Sometimes it's dangerous also to their lives, but they still do it because they believe God has called them to do this. And one such person is our character for today. And his name was Sadhu Sundar Singh. So let's have a look at his story. This is the story of Sadhu Sundar Singh. Sadhu Sundar Singh was born on September 3rd, 1889 in the Punjab region of our neighbouring country, India. He was the son of a rich and religious family of the Sikh community. Following his mother, Sundar, as a boy, grew up involved in the duties of the Sikh religion. At a very young age, he memorised the Bhagavad Gita and recited the book from memory before a Sikh holy man. He was very proud of his achievement. His ambition was to grow more and more in his religious faith. Sundar studied at a missionary school where European missionaries were the teachers. The school was located very close to his home. It was there that he first learned something of Christianity, but when he was told to read the New Testament at school, he refused to do it. And on another day, he publicly tore a New Testament into pieces to show how much he was against it. For this, he was made the leader of the anti-Christian group of students. As a result of all this, he had to leave the mission school and he entered a government school which was located very far from his home. To show off his anger towards Christian Sundar Singh threw stones and dirt at missionaries as they were preaching publicly, burned the New Testament and did other similar things. But because of doing these things, he lost his peace of mind and his heart was troubled. One day at 3 o'clock in the morning, he woke up and had a bath and did his religious devotions and he prayed from his heart, O God, if there is a God, reveal yourself to me. Give me peace by showing me the way of salvation. Suddenly, a bright light filled the room where he was in, and in the midst of the light, he saw the very person that he had forcefully rejected, the living Christ. The Lord showed Sundar his wounded hand and said to him, Why do you persecute me? I am your saviour. At that moment, Sundar's heart overflowed with joy. His spiritual thirst was satisfied. He received Jesus Christ into his life as his personal saviour. With this experience, Sundar told his father that he had become a Christian. At first, his father did not believe it. When they saw that he had decided to become a Christian, Sundar's entire family was astonished. They asked him not to put them to shame by abandoning his mother's religion. A rich uncle of Sundar invited him to his house and took told him that if he would renounce his new faith, he would give him a huge amount of money as well as precious stones that he possessed. Yet, because of the passionate love for Christ he now had in his heart, Sundar was unable to renounce his faith. His family members became very angry and chased him from the house. Several days later, he was given permission to return home, but he had to stay with the low-caste labourers. Sundar had to face numerous painful experiences, but he endured it all for Jesus Christ. One day he was incurably ill and came close to death, and yet God saved him from death in order that his great purpose would be achieved. When he got well, Sundar joined the missionaries and started to memorize God's word. On his 16th birthday, he received baptism in the city of Shimla. 
After that, he spent much time in prayer and he was seeking God's will. He dedicated his life completely to Christ and became a Christian sadhu. He gave away everything he owned, even his books, and barefoot and wearing a yellow robe, carrying a New Testament in his hand and unassisted by anybody, he set out to serve God by reaching people who did not know God's love. Each and every year, he journeyed through Punjab, Kashmir, Afghanistan, Nepal and the mountain slopes of Tibet. He travelled through the mountain peaks and the forests, regardless of extreme cold, rain or sun. To escape the gaily winds and rain, he took shelter under forest trees and in caves. One day he got up in the morning to find a leopard sleeping next to him. Another day he saw there was a tiger in his cave. One very cold day, he felt that there was something inside his blanket. When he removed the blanket and looked, he saw there was a huge cobra there. In such experiences, it was because of God's power that he was protected. Going barefoot, as he walked on mountain ridges, his feet were cut by the rocks and ice, and often blood flowed from both his feet. For this reason, he came to be called the Apostle with the Bleeding Feet. Despite many obstacles he had to face, he did not forget to proclaim the love of Jesus Christ. In 1918, Sundar came to South India and from there he crossed the sea and came also to Ceylon, Sri Lanka. He stayed in Ceylon for six weeks. The newspapers published notices of his meetings in Kandy, Jaffna and Colombo. People of other faiths also came to listen to his messages. Because he spoke of the people's traditions and culture, through them people of other faiths were able to receive Christ. Once he came to a certain village, there, sitting down on a log, he began to sing a song. Many people came to listen to the song, but as soon as he began to speak about Jesus, the people became angry and turned against him. A man by the name of Rup Ram unexpectedly hit Sundar so hard that he bent over and fell on the ground. His hand and cheek were cut by the rocks and blood started to flow from them. He got up slowly, prayed for those who had opposed him and spoke to them about the love of Jesus. Rup Ram was amazed to hear this and became a believer. Because of his preaching about Jesus in the land of Tibet, Sundar was arrested. His clothes were torn and he was thrown into a very deep pit, which was then closed and locked from above. Sundar remained for three days without food or water inside this stinking well. Then as he prayed in anguish, the trap door which had been locked opened and a rope was let down. He heard a voice telling him to hold on to the rope and come up. Soon after he had come up out of the well onto the ground, the person who had rescued him closed the lid of the well and disappeared into darkness. Soon they understood that it was Jesus himself who had rescued him. After he had regained his strength, he began again to preach the gospel even despite the many obstacles. He did not consider bitter cold rain, mountains, precipices, dense forests, prison cells and death as obstacles to preaching about Jesus Christ. News of his suffering, persecution experiences spread everywhere. And then Christians all over the world invited Sadhu Sundar Singh, to whom they gave the honorary title, the Apostle of India, to preach to them. Many people saw the image of Jesus through Sadhu Sundar Singh. By his passion for lost souls and his living a holy life, he reflected Jesus Christ who was the hero of his life. At the end he wrote, I am leaving today for Tibet. I know the dangers and the difficulties of the journey, but I must try my best to do my duty according to my calling. Sadhu Sundar Singh wrote these words in a letter to a friend on the 18th of April in 1929 and set out for Tibet. The date by which he was to return passed. He did not return. No news was received either from him or about him. Despite the various ideas people have about what may have happened, he could not be found. And so in 1933, the government of India officially declared him to have died. Wow, what an amazing story of a young boy who then grew to be such a great person. During his troubled times, he wanted to see Jesus and he prayed and finally he saw Jesus. He had an encounter with Jesus in that room and from then on his life changed and he felt that he had to do 
and tell others go and tell others about jesus's love and what has happened in his life and so he went he traveled like they said across india he went to tibet he even came to sri lanka ceylon at that time and this is the life that sadhu sundar singh lived a life devoted to spreading god's news the good news of jesus christ to the entire world that was the life of sadhu sundar singh such a humble person he really uh was a person who followed jesus wholeheartedly and lived a humble life and they saw the savior as characteristics in his life as well in sadhu sundar singh's life so what can we take from this lesson we should also take every opportunity we get to share the love of jesus with those around us it can be our family members our friends uh people or children we go to school with who travel in our school vans uh our neighbors anyone you get to meet who you have uh, relationships with or friendships with tell them about jesus it doesn't have to be great big things you don't have to preach on a sunday to tell people about jesus you can say you know i had this problem i pray to jesus and you know in a few days i got the reply i want i got the answer uh to my prayer or you know someone i know was uh, scared for the exam and i prayed for them and they said that they felt like they remembered everything they studied and they really did the exam well so small small things like this maybe your friends might tell you to pray for them when the exams are close by you never know so in these small ways you can introduce jesus into their lives as well and uh, things such as praying before you eat you no know, aunt practices that at home before each meal we say a small prayer so when you go out also you can do that you don't have to say it loud you can just bow your head and say a very small quick prayer saying jesus thank you for this food that you have given me thank you for the hands that made this food and that i have this meal to eat you know and your friends might wonder what you're doing and you can say no i just said a small prayer to thank jesus for the food i have and in that way your friends might think ha huh, that is a really nice habit to have to be thankful for the food that you have got so in these small small ways you can put little bits of jesus love jesus's love into other people's lives and who knows one day one of these friends of yours might want to know jesus even more and might accept jesus into their lives also and it's now time for our craft activity so children for our handwork today we will be needing a pair of scissors some felt pens a saucer to mix your paint with cuz auntie is using paint and the brushes also auntie is using an old a calendar paper for the handwork so you can use one as well and now as you can see auntie has cut out a piece of the calendar paper and now auntie is going to decorate this with the paint that auntie has and you can decorate this paper in any way you want as well auntie decorated auntie's paper like this with paint with purple and green and blue paint i colored it lightly so that i can write on top of this and then auntie had some colored tape so auntie put a small border with it and now on this piece of craft paper we are going to write a prayer write a prayer for someone who you would like to experience jesus in their life so you can write a prayer like this dear lord jesus i pray for and then you can write the person's name i pray that he experiences your love in his life jesus help me to tell him about you jesus give me the strength and courage i need to speak to him i commit him specially into your hands in jesus name Amen. In this way, you can write prayers for anyone in your family or your friends, and you can keep this prayer in your Bible and pray it every night before you go to sleep. And now it's time for our chorus for today, and our chorus is "I have decided to follow Jesus." I have decided to follow Jesus. Turning back the world behind 
Let us bring our Sunday school lesson to a close with a prayer. You can say the prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for this beautiful day. Jesus, thank you for everything you do for me. Jesus, I pray for everyone who does not know your love. Help me to share your love with others. Help me to tell those who do not know about you how great you are and what a good friend you are to me. Help me to be brave and speak the truth. Jesus, I commit my family, everybody I love and my precious country into your hands. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So till Auntie sees you next week with another amazing story or Bible story, please take care of yourself, be safe and be obedient to your parents and your guardians. God bless, take care and remember to always share and remember that Jesus loves each and every one of you very, very much. See you soon. Bye.